In this video, I'm gonna show you my exact process on how to photograph this watch. I'll be going through what equipment you need, how you can make your own equipment, and also exactly how to set up the lighting so you, that you're gonna get professional results when you photograph your uh, watches. So let's get straight into it. First thing you guys are gonna need is a watch stand like this one here. So these are pretty cheap to buy. You can get them online and they come in packs and they're used for uh, displaying watches in uh, jewelry stores. So you can see that this part here is flexible so it's gonna fit sort of any sort of, uh, well, it's gonna fit a wide variety of watches and also this part comes off like this. So it's got a little stand like this and there's acrylic and clear. Uh, if you can't get acrylic or clear plastic like this one, you can get it in uh, white. That would be your best color choices, but um, I'd recommend getting a clear one. You're also gonna need one of these, and this is a homemade uh, shooting product cone. And what this does here, this creates beautiful diffused uh, lighting. So if you don't uh, diffuse the light, um, given that this is a metal product, you're gonna have a lot of harsh uh, highlights and the product's just not gonna look good. So we're gonna use one of these. Uh, you can buy these uh, from, from uh, photographic stores. They're quite expensive though. So I've made one myself. It looks pretty scrappy now because I've had this for years. Um, that time I've gotten a lot of use out of it and it didn't cost me much to make it. Um, so the way I made it, this stuff here comes in rolls. Um, this is. I've just, this is an off cut, but this is called Translum. T R A N S L U M. Uh, and this, it's essentially a plastic uh, and it lets light through it. So it's a sort of translucent um, or semi translucent material. And it creates a nice diffused light. Uh, you can get this, I think Savage make it, um, but you can, you can get it in a photographic store and it comes in about. Uh, 10 meter or 20 foot rolls and comes quite quite wide as well so this stuff is great for making your own diffusers and this is good because you can shape it in different ways and it will hold its form uh, if you use uh, paper like uh, diffusion paper or diffusion rolls or fabric you, you don't you can't uh, have it stiff like that so that's what's good about this the way I made mine this is just a piece of irrigation hose. Cut it to right length and I just had a joiner and put it in so that's held it like this and then now I've just used gaffer's tape to uh, just to tape the cone on to cut out the right shape. Lens goes in this side as you can see I do need to upgrade uh, my equipment but uh, it's still working fine so I'm not going to bother right now. Um, so you've got your shooting cone, you've got your watch stand. I use uh, studio strobes to do this, and on the end of my on the end of my reflectors, I use a grid. And what this does is this restricts the light, so it stops it spreading so far, and that's important uh, when it comes to uh, shooting watches. So you can create highlights in the right spots. So. You don't have to have these, but um, you're going to get a better quality photo with um, some nice highlights if you do have these. You can also use a snoot. So with the grid on the end, which is exactly the same as, same as this, the honeycomb grid. So on there, or you can take it out. Uh, these are really good for if you really want a very narrow beam of light and really want to control your light, then then uh, having a snoot is what you want. Um, the disadvantage of the snoot is it really does suck a lot of the light power away. So you need to really turn up the light, um, turn up your light uh, power to really overcome that. First thing we need to do is take our watch and we need to clean it. So that's the same with any product photography, make sure you clean all the dust off, otherwise it's gonna show up in the final photo and Although normally you can uh, retouch it, it's easier to, uh, you'll save yourself some time by giving it a clean. You're always gonna get better results if you don't have to, the less retouching you do. First thing you wanna do is uh, you want some white gloves. It's being metal, it's gonna leave fingerprints, no matter how careful you think you are. So pop your gloves on. 
Here I've got a microfiber cloth, so I'm just gonna, I'm just, I'm gonna clean the glass. You wanna hold it up to the light. Just make sure there's no uh, fingerprints, no scratches, that sort of thing. You wanna clean it all, you wanna clean all, you wanna clean the back, you wanna clean everywhere, basically. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set the time. The industry standard for shooting watches is 10, 10 past 10. And the reason that you wanna set it to that is because most of the most watch manufacturers will have their logo right in the middle here, up near the 12 uh, marker. 10 past 10 is a good, a good area of the hands just to keep that uh, so the logo can be seen easily. So watch manufacturers, they're pretty particular about this. Um, they're very detail orientated and they want to show off all the details of their design. So uh, just uh, when you're setting it, make sure you set it to that. And what I've done is I've just pulled the crown out here so that so the time doesn't change because it can take quite some time to get all your lights right and, and you'll notice that, that uh, the time's changed in between. So you can pull that out to avoid it. And what I didn't do in Photoshop afterwards, I just simply move it move it back in, which is pretty quick and easy to do. The other thing, if your watch has a second hand, I tend to put it around the um, seven or the eight, uh, around this marker here, the seven marker. And that's normally a good spot for the second hand and that'll keep it out away from the logo. You could put it up at the 12th position, but then that sort of dissects the logo and you don't really want that. So. Okay, so once you've cleaned your watch, you're then going to put it on the, on the little stand. Now you may be able to shoot your watch like, you normally want to angle it up like that so it's pretty much um, the watch face is parallel with your surface, the shooting surface here. Um, and you can do that with this particular one, this, that comes, out, comes away, the base comes off and that'll just sit there like that. But you could put a block you could set it up like this, put a little block underneath it to hold it up into the right, right spot. But um, so let's just put that down like that. And you will see a little bit of the stand hanging out here, but that's okay because we're gonna Photoshop it later. Um, the surface I've got here, that's just a piece of foam core board. It's very cheap. You can get that in a lot of a lot of places I use foam core all the time for reflectors and for shooting surfaces just because it's cheap, it's light um, and I can cut it to size. The way we use this is we pop that over, over the product like so. So start with one light, find out where you are and then you could slowly add lights. In this case I'm going to be shooting with just two, possibly three lights. Um, I've done this a lot of times, a lot already, so in the past, over the years, so I already, I've got a pretty good idea of where the lights need to go to sort of create the look that I want. Um, you know, in some cases you might use four or five lights. You could also just get away with one, uh, one light. But each light is gonna create, do something different. It's gonna put some light in a spot. You know, I wanna be quite specific where I'm gonna put the light. So let's start, let's turn the light on. Okay, so we haven't got the grid on. I'm gonna put the grid on because I know without it, it's gonna spread the light a lot more. And that just, all right, that just clips straight on to the end of uh, your reflector. And you, you don't need, you don't necessarily need uh, studio strobes or flashes. You can do this with speed lights as well. Uh, the studio strobes, there's a, lot of mod there's a lot of modifiers for them and that will really just, a lot of options to shape your light differently, whereas there's less for, uh, generally less for speed lights. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put it where we think it needs to go. And just gonna have a look through the lens and take a photo. So that'll give me a sort of base reading of where we are right now. And when you're taking your photo, you wanna make sure that there's even distance between the strap there. So you want to make sure if you take it too much to, to one side of center, and I'll put a picture up, I'll show you what I mean. It's not going to look good. You have to move your camera in the right spot so you're on top of the uh, on top of the product. The other thing I tend to do is you, want, you need to make sure that the hole is in the right spot because what you want to do is you want to make sure that the, the watch is reflecting 
off the white part of the cone, the watch face I should say, is reflecting off the white part of the cone because if it reflects your camera lens, the metal parts are going to appear to look black and that's not what you want. You want the bezels and the, and the watch hands to look uh, nice and shiny and to do that they need to be reflecting the white part of the cone and not your camera lens. So that's a case of moving your camera around. You can tilt your lens very slightly like, like this. And what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to move your light around. You can try different heights, different directions, and you'll see that you can you can move you can move the uh, the highlight that you've just created. So I'll take a picture, and I'm going to make sure we'll we'll show these. And again, and guys, if you don't if you don't have multiple lights, you can do this with a single light. But what you would need is a tripod mount your camera like that, you have a tripod, you hold it very steady, steady and take a photo with the light where you want it and then you can move, move your light to the next spot, take another photo, move it and then in Photoshop you can layer them all together and you can paint in the different lights uh, where, where you want it. So that's one little workaround if you don't have, uh, if you don't have many lights. So I'm going to put that light there. I like to put, have one uh, highlight sort of around the seven an 8 o'clock area. I'm going to turn my other light on here. This one's a bit noisier. I'm going to take our next photo. And that's way too bright, so we're going to turn that right down. I should mention what I've got my camera set on. I've got it set on f16. And this is a macro lens, 100mm 2.8 macro lens. And the reason I have it on f16 is I want a lot of depth of field. And being some, when you've got something small and you're up very close to it, the closer you go to something, the less depth of field you get. So having, I want, because I want a lot of focus and I'm up close, I'm going to choose f16. And, and that's, I don't normally like to go higher than that on this lens because it becomes less sharp. It's still pretty sharp at f16, this lens. but. Um, you know, f18 and higher, it starts to lose some of that sharpness. I mean, the sweet spot in this lens is a lot, uh, is a much bigger aperture like f8 on this lens, um, or 5.6, but um, f16 is still good on this lens. Okay, that's kind of getting where we want it. So I'm just, again, like I said, I'm gonna move this light around and get it right right in the spot that we want and where you put where you put your lights is up to you that's um, going to be personal preference on uh, you know how you like your highlights how you like to shoot your products what you will notice too is when you're shooting particularly something with a dark face like this watch you'll notice that because you're shooting into the white here, the watch face, the watch face can turn out a little bit um, almost frosted over. Normally, that that is fine to fix. You can fix that easily in Lightroom or in Photoshop, and just um, by bringing the shadows back down a bit, just or brushing, dodging, and burning the watch face, and using the curves in Photoshop, and you can pull down those um, dark tones again to make it nice and uh, contrasty. So. That is the disadvantage of using a cone like this, um, but uh, using a cone like this really makes it much easier to photograph a watch. So I, I'm pretty happy with that right now. One thing I should say is when you're using these gridded lights, you should be able to, if I sh show you, I'll put this over here. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but you can see how bright that is there and, and the light falls off very quickly. So the closer you have that light, the smaller that highlight will be. If you put the light further away like this, it's going to be a lot more spread out and you're not going to so much get the highlight on your product. Getting this right is really about the, the positioning of the lights. Have to keep the model light, modeling light on. So the modeling light is, the, is this light here that you can see. 
you can see uh, if I turn it off, that's that light there. And then, then you can actually see what you're doing with these lights. Um, if you keep the modelling light off, then the only way you're going to know if you've got the, got the light in the right spot is when you've taken a photo. So it makes it a bit more difficult. So if you're using speed lights, for example, that would make it a bit more difficult to be able to know where your light is. You just have to keep taking photos until you've got your light in the right spot. All right, guys, well, I hope this was uh, helpful and this will help you guys to create your own uh, product photos of uh, watches pretty easily and quickly. If you like this video, please do subscribe and leave me a comment below if you photograph watches. I'd love to hear how, how you guys uh, photograph your watches and what your setup is. Catch you later.